Hey there. Hiya. I'll let everyone in. All righty. Hey there, it's 502, it's SLP, it's Watch Me Work. Today is the 13th of May. Um, we are going to do what we do uh, every Monday when we have Watch Me Work. We're going to work uh, in unison for 20 minutes. And then we are going to, I'm going to take your questions and answer your questions for the remaining part of the hour. Um, we're free to work on whatever you want. And I say hi to some of you, like Jesse, who I saw outside the public theater, um, and Rebecca, who I saw at, at the Rockwood in the public theater. Hey, everybody who's been coming by the public theater and other places. To, it's great to see you in person, um, and it's great to see you on Zoom. So again, we're going to work together for, for 20 minutes, and then we're going to, um, I'm going to take questions about your work. Sorry, I'm just setting the clock. I'm going to take questions about your work in your creative process. And if you wanna get in touch during the talk time, oh, one thing, while we do have plenty of time to talk about process, we don't have any time for you to actually share your work. So with that in mind, if you wanna get in touch during the talking time, Zoe from the New Work Development Process is gonna tell you how it goes, Zoe. Yes, actually Haley will uh -huh. tell us today. Well, tell us how. All right, Haley, tell us how. Hi guys, so at the end of the 20 minute work session, just use your raise your hand function to ask a question. And then once you do, we'll call on you in the order of the hands raised and ask you to mute yourself. Fantastic, it is that simple. Okay, for the first time ever, I'm gonna turn off my camera while I work cause I gotta go in the other room and uh, get back into another meeting. Ha <laughs> ha, so I'm gonna turn on the timer, uh, turn off my camera. And then at the end of 20 minutes, I'll turn back on my camera and I'll be here just like nothing ever happened. All right, so here we go. Here we go.
Hey, hey, hey. Okay, that was about 20 minutes. So now, um, if there are any uh, questions about your work or your creative process, we'll be happy to talk about it with you. Hope you all are well today on the 13th of May. So please go ahead and use your raise your hand function and we'll call in your name. Thank you. Hi, Sharon. Can you unmute yourself? Hi. Hi, hey, Sharon. Sharon. Hey, Sharon. How are you today? I'm good. I'm very happy to be here. Happy to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, this is more of a general question. It kind of applies to what I'm working on now, but it's something I'm thinking about. Uh, I'm relatively new to playwriting, and as I read strong plays... I'm looking at the way there's sort of a matrix of what, what different characters need and how those needs conflict with the, with the needs of other characters. Um, and I come more from a background of screenwriting. So when I'm outlining a work and I'm thinking about it, I'm mostly thinking about plot. But I look at great plays and I'm like, it's the, does this make sense that it's the, the configuration of needs what, and I'm and I'm trying to think about how I would begin to outline from that place. I mean, if that's the way you read plays, you can outline from that place, the configuration of needs. I'm not really sure I know what you're talking about. Um, screenplays and plays to me follow such similar lines that it's wonderful. Um, so I, I, I really don't know what you're talking about. I mean, if I were to talk about, um, yeah. Hamlet and I don't know, <laughs> uh, Planet of the Apes part one, the remake, that sounds like it's, it's, those are story points. Um, you just calling them different things. I, I forget what was your phrase in the first one Configur <laughs> configuration of needs well then maybe I can ask like a real playwriting 101 question when you when you have a play and you're starting to outline it where do you begin what does the character want what's the story and I mean, then Cinderella kind of Planet of the Apes Part One, that's a movie. You know, there's a character named, I don't know what his name is. He doesn't have a name at the beginning. What does he want? He wants a family. He wants love. We later find out that they name him Caesar, you know, the, the, the main Andy Circus character, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants, he wants, you could say. Uh, what, what does Hamlet want? Hamlet wants to find out who killed his dad. So if you call it something different, it is different. Like back in the day, they used to call, you know, there used to be the, uh, the whatever, the, the enlightened and the noble and the savage or whatever. They used to classify people in different ways. We're all people. Guess what? Bing, bing. We're all people. So you can call things, you can classify things by different names to make yourself feel like you're looking so at something different. But I think you're just looking at the same thing. Mm. So what does the character want? What's the story? You know, um, I think in a in a movie, which, what movie have you outlined? Because you probably have watched more movies than uh, me. Movies that I've watched. I I recently uh, looked at all the Charlie Kaufman movies again. So I outlined those. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to pull up one in my mind. Which one, which one is your favorite? Uh... So the, the, this, the outline of this one's the, tr the trickiest, but Synecdoche, New York. Right. So what does the main character want? He's or trying to capture they, they, life. Right. He's trying to capture life in a work of art. Right. So is that plot or is that what a character wants? That's what a character wants. I, I think I'm thinking about how to... Um, 
how to construct some a story out of different characters wants getting in the way of other characters wants you know um like i i actually re recently reread your play fucking a and i and it's like the um is it the mayor of the town the mayor of the town wants to stay rich and he wants a child his mistress wants him to marry her his wife wants him to stay with her so like different people want different things and they kind of get if everybody got every it's impossible for everybody to get what they want because one character wants what another character definitely doesn't want i wouldn't say it's impossible for everybody to get what they want hmm that would be a whole different play. Yeah. You have to, um, I would encourage you to continue to open your mind mm -hmm. and open your heart and continue to expand. Because a lot of times we get into trouble or difficulty or what we experience is difficulty because we have a closed sense of what should happen. Mm. What should happen? And what it should be called. And we're like, why am I having a problem? Um, because we're not really embracing what's there. We're embracing what we think should be there. Mm. So um, I, in my experience, movies, and again, I'm, I've got Planet of the Apes on my mind because that's what my son is watching um, right now. <laughs> but uh uh, Synecdoche, New York is another one. So that character, uh, is that the one that was Philip Seymour Hoffman in it? I'm trying yeah. to, okay, yeah. great. He wants what he wants and it would also make a great play, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing. It's just people wanting things and people wanting, I mean, if I want to walk from, where do you live? In Fort Greene, in Brooklyn. If I want to walk from here to Fort Greene, Brooklyn, across the manhattan bridge right you can do that still right yeah and 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 someone didn't want me to get there they would there i would want one thing and they would want another thing and that would be enough to have a play right yeah so j just yeah just think of what your who are your characters who are they and what do they want cool cool Thank you. Good question. Very good question. Thank you, Sharon. Hi, Octavio. You can unmute yourself. Oh, I think you're still muted, Octavio. Oh, you're still muted, bro. Hello. Hey. Hi, everyone. How, How are you all today? How are you having a great Monday? And any of you were moms, happy Mother's Day uh, from yesterday or the week. Uh, I have a quick question. Um, I'm a little stuck <laughs> on a play. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep thinking about um, I keep thinking about the performance, <laughs> the production of the play, right? Okay. Which I shouldn't, right? It's uh, it's a monologue play, but I keep trying to make it into a full play with other actors because I keep imagining this play that it's not. It shouldn't be a monologue. It should be more. So I'm kind of stuck in that, and I think it's. I'm just using this as an excuse to not finish my first draft of it. <laughs> See, okay. I'm kind of trapping myself I'm not to go forward with it, that I don't want it to be a, a, a monologue play because I, I was asked to write this play as, uh -huh. a, as, as a one person show, but I keep thinking of it more. Oh, oh, congratulations. So if someone asked you to write a one person show? Yes, correct. Are they correct. paying you? No, just friends. She owes, I, I owe her. She directed one of my plays, so so I'm doing it for her, you know, because she did a play. She directed Great. one of my plays, so I'm working Fantastic. with her. And, she, and, and she'd like you to write it for her. Yes, correct. Correct. Fantastic. You know what? Like I was like I was telling Sharon, you know, you can have both. Okay. You can have it all. Guess what? Sharon, you too. You can have both. Write your one person play, Octavia. Okay. Write it. Finish it. Do good by a friend who did good to you. And okay. then, because it's your play, right. expand it. Okay. And, and and every time you feel like another character's coming up, make them a separate person. All right. And make sure you fill in what they want and what, what you know where they start and where they end up and all those things. 
I mean, you can actually do both. I mean, you could, you, I'm sure you guys have probably heard of like productions of Hamlet where one actor brilliantly plays all the roles or there was a Christmas Carol on Broadway, I think last year, um, maybe the year before last or whatever, where one character played all the roles in a Christmas Carol, the novel has many, 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 many characters, right? And so that in that way, they took Dickens novel and collapsed it into one role. But you can do the same thing with Hamlet. One person plays Hamlet and all the roles, right? Could you imagine the scene with like his mother and Hamlet and his mother and Hamlet and then Polonius? It'd be fun, right? So I tell you, you can do the same thing. Okay. Finish what you started, finish your one person play, and then pick up the same, pick up that play me hand it to your friend and then pick up that play and rewrite it as a multi-person play. Okay. You're allowed. It's yours. You know, we, we forget that, that we are allowed to do things. Like I said, again, you can open your mind. You're allowed. You're allowed. And I think it's wonderful that you're, 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 you know, giving a friend something wonderful to perform. That's really a wonderful gift. And you'll give yourself a gift of a, an awesome play with lots of characters. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully why not why not come on it's 2024 right right <laughs> all right sometimes not we stuck now, ourselves man. right in our no 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 if right. not now yeah. when you know right i mean do you That's see a way true. where you can make several characters in this play oh definitely i can see that's that's the thing like i said that that uh impeach me stops me from advancing my first draft in the monologue that as i'm writing the monologue I just want to throw in three other characters to jump in that were, you know, that I just want to write the, not the monologue. I just don't want to continue with the monologue piece. Just need to buckle Come up on. and write it. Come I on. Guess. Just, just like, this pep talk. Buckle, <laughs> buckle up and finish it. Buckle up and finish it. Do your right. friend a solid. Come on, bro. Do your friend right. a solid. Right. Finish the monologue. Just be like, one person is talking. Get grounded in whoever that person is and just start talking about everybody. Oh my God, she's a gossip and she sees all these people out the window. Come on. Get solid, do your friend a solid, make good on your promise, and then go back and do it the way that you prefer to do it. All right. Okay. Okay, check back in with us. We'd love to hear how it's going. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lou. You can unmute yourself. Hi. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay. Where are you? I know, exactly. I'm in the Adirondacks at a writing residency and my Wi-Fi is really murky. So congratulations. Thank you very much. It's feeling um, very I'm, beautiful. Oh yeah. It's like a, it's in a miraculous place. You should see the other view. I'm looking at a mountain fast right now. So I'm feeling pretty lucky to be here. Um I'm so glad I was able to reach you today because I wanted to plug in to sure. this energy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so thank you as always, everyone in SLP, thank you. Um, my question today is a little bit zooming out to the career of writing. You just, it was so cool because I just wrote in my notebook, the career of writing in 2024. You just talked about the year mm -hmm. that we're in. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, this year. So I've been working on a new version of my book proposal, which I love and I'm excited about. And yeah. it's been joyful to write and I feel like I'm in an amazing place and it went out to publishers two weeks ago Yay. which is still just a very short period of time in that world I know but I've heard from two uh, my agent's totally non -plus. she's like it's fine but from two editors she just doesn't have a platform that we just don't she just doesn't have a platform like we want to see her have a platform before we engage like followers and all these things and so I don't necessarily want to talk about like that exactly, except to say I'm sitting here in this beautiful place and I'm thinking about my platform. <laughs> and I just wanted to talk about like the push and pull of of that thing of of being a writer right now. And one of my options, and many writers do this, I think, really successfully, um, share writing on newsletters like Substack and different things sometimes really quality writing and I'm always, I follow a lot of them and I'm thrilled that they do it. But I'm sitting out here just thinking about this idea of like giving away writing that I'm proud of, or I'm obviously I'm still waiting for this process and it could still go my way, but it's a question I'm kind of wrestling with in this beautiful place mm -hmm. of like the, the platform, the marketplace, the, 
the art, you know, all I want to do is plug into this energy here and make, and I understand so deeply at this point after working so hard for so long, the joy of that. And I'm sort of being assaulted with this other input right now. And I just wanted to bring it here and hear your thoughts on wow. it. Wow. Well, like Lou, like by platform, they mean like you don't have a following yet. What, what, what is it? What does this mean? Yeah. That's what they mean. You don't, you don't have, you don't have like a million followers on Insta or whatever. Is that what they Just mean? to say again, yeah, my book is nonfiction. So it's, I guess, a unique space where you sort of have to be an expert to have a book, but I am an expert as my book will evidence, but they want me to sort of prove that before, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And again, it's not over. I might call you, it would be I'm great. Just, I'll call you in a couple of months and say it no, happened. I'm just, it's just like I'm just the, saying that's, yeah, that's really, that's really unfortunate. Um, it's like, um, yeah, I think uh, what I notice in this, uh, in the arts and, and probably in other businesses is that more and more people, there are people who want you to do their job. <laughs> and I don't mind doing the job or whatever job I'm supposed to be doing. But when, yeah, when someone says yes and do my job, like if, if they're, if one of their jobs in this editing, in this publishing consortium might be uh, marketing and they're asking you to come, come with your platform, which means that you have already done like half of their job, which is fine, which is fine if that's the way it is, but that's really asking the writer to do things that, that um, are in addition to writing um, mm -hmm. because the, also the belief is that anybody can write or anybody can create. And while anybody can create, that's true. Not everybody does. And that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Not everybody takes the time to create. Everybody can create, 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 creating is one of those things that, we can do as people or as trees or as flowers or whatever we can all create. Not every person though does. Some people get sidetracked and, 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 and they allow their time to be taken up by watching, you know, uh, reruns of Mary Tyler Moore show or whatever is your thing, you know? Um, so that's, that's difficult to hear. Um, and you said you would be giving it away on Substack. Um, is that what happened? I, mean, I guess like that you're giving some, it away. I guess you can sell subscriptions and you can mm -hmm. work, you know, work that angle and people just do well. So maybe I should, maybe that's a little bit not totally true. Because you're not giving it, I mean, even if you publish on Substack, you could still, in my understanding, publish in addition to, you could publish it as a book. Is that correct? Or is that not That's correct? my understanding. I think... <sighs> It might be correct, but a publisher might have an opinion about work being out there. You know, it could be a positive or a negative. It's already out there. So don't you have anything new? That kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say first, which I think you're already doing, is do the absolute best job at the work that you have to do. Mm -hmm. So if that's like writing, do your absolute best. Leave no stone unturned. If you have to do 25,000 drafts, do 25,000 drafts. If it takes seven years, let it take seven years. Whatever the, you know, like, whatever. Don't be in a hurry, you know, to get to a finish line uh, and and come and, and turn in some, some, you know, less than wonderful work. I'm not saying perfect. I'm just saying do everything you have to do. <laughs> and, you know, Keep asking, sound, might sound corny to you, but keep asking the universe to show you how to get a platform. <laughs> Why not? You know, when you're doing yeah. your meditation, hey, universe, you know, you know, like help my knee feel better or whatever your thing is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Help my knee feel yeah. better. Help my, help my dog, you know, stop throwing up on the carpet, whatever. And, you know, show me how to build a platform. Just throw yeah. it in there. Throw it in there. It it might be a fun challenge. You might find it to be enjoyable. Yeah. And, 
you know, and the platform might come in a way that's going to introduce you to a whole community of people that you never would have met if you had gone the more traditional route. Yeah. You know, that resonates. Yeah, that resonates. Yeah. I mean, I'm into social media. I like, you know, I like speaking. I mean, I like doing that. Oh, this isn't a platform, but I, I like doing different w- kinds of things. So it's not mm-hmm. just sitting in your ivory tower with your quill pen or whatever. Those days are 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 not as as uh, not the only way to go these days. So embrace yeah. the, embrace the new things, and and they might lead you somewhere wonderful. And in the, and also alongside, please keep doing your work to the best of your ability. A lot of times people trade platform yes for yeah so they say okay I, I don't need to be so good at my work i'll get really good at schmoozing and then you have a lot of people whose work is out there that's me you know but they're really good at schmoozing and people coming up unfortunately start seeing schmoozing is a more important thing and that's too bad yeah so, you know, I'm terrible at schmoozing. Yeah, because I'm. Really oh, I bet. <laughs> hey, I bet if you put a little more effort into it, you'd be really good. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Just, just know that, like, you know, de- develop that side of yourself. You know, yeah, being, I, being a good schmoozer is not a bad thing. Yeah, I like the playfulness of like asking the universe and just putting it in front of my, just like that's that's a trick that's worked that you've shared about the work itself you know try to just take the block out and yeah. celebrate it and then maybe that's maybe this is just another one of those things yeah yeah and yeah. say to hey now i've got a great platform and now my publisher goes oh my god lou what a great platform and your work is brilliant wow wow this is amazing you're amazing like that just play these games i mean i do it all the time yeah it's funny because it makes it funny right then it all yeah. of a sudden, it's not like this unobtainable thing that they put in your way that, you know, like you have to spin the straw into gold and then you have to, you know, this is some, some rough stuff. So just make it fun. Right on. Thank you so much. I Thank really appreciate so it. Thank you, Lou. Beautiful question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Hi, Erica. You can unmute yourself. Hey, Erica. Hi, how are you? I'm well, Erica. Thanks. Thanks. What's your question today? Very similar. Well, not as similar to lose, but she made me think of it because I do like for work, for money, I'm selling and publicizing and doing like advertising and things like that, writing mm-hmm. type things. And so I do sort of do that for other people and mm-hmm. I find like, I think this is a question that I've maybe asked before and Mm -hmm. I try to like reset my brain when I move from one thing to the next, like even do like a five minute meditation or something. Cause I feel like I'm really bad at, um, well, I'm not, it's a challenge, let's say to compartmentalize at one way of thinking and one kind of brain with like the immersing in the project. And so I want to do my thing, but Mm -hmm. then I say, okay, I'm going to get back to like, I do write for 20 minutes first because I know that's when my brain is the best. Even if I have a ton of shit to do, I at least do that. But then I think, okay, I'm going to come back to it and work this afternoon or whatever. But then the other things just, it's not even that I don't have any more time. It's just that my like energy is gone. And I wondered if there's like some tricks with like bringing back your immersion or your thinking about your own work separately from all the things that one does for other people or for money. (laughs) Because right now I don't get any money for work, but I, I'm trying to just like kind of organize those things. And every time I think I have a handle on it, um, it's, it's very slippery. It's, it's hard to hold on to, I guess. No, I hear you. I hear you, Erica. Let's say, let's just pretend, I mean, just to make it kind of fun. Let's pretend that for money, instead of doing writerly things, for money, you like danced in a show called River Dance. <laughs> You've heard of it. You've yes. heard of it. Michael uh, Flatley. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. I don't know them by <laughs> name. I just know that they, they move with right, such right. beautiful, yeah, precision and, and yep. energy. Great. So say you had to dance for money, you made like good money, you know, dancing for River Dance. 
And you also wanted to do your writer thing, right? So would it make any sense like 20 minutes before you went off to went on stage, let's just say, I know there's half hour and makeup and all this kind of stuff, but let's just say 20 minutes before you go on stage, you're doing your writing. And then you go on stage and you do river dance for two hours or however long the show is. And then you get off stage and you're like, I don't have any energy to do my writing. I've been doing river dance for two hours, right? Would that make sense? Yes. Yeah, right. I mean, it, it sounds I mean, like, right? I mean, it's not right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so I would suggest, if you were doing river dance for money, I would suggest that why don't you spend longer than 20 minutes doing your writing before you do river dance? So, like, I don't know, Erica? Like, what time plan my life better. So it's not... <laughs> well, yeah. that's, you yeah. know, that's, that's called... Yeah. That's called your responsibility. I know. Yep. So what what time do you get up in the morning? Early. That's my best time. So I get up at like six or even earlier if I can. Great. So let's just say six. Okay. And what time do you start writing after you've gotten up at six? Six forty. Six forty. Fantastic. And then you you're done writing at seven then. Well, Yes, yeah. on a bat, uh, yes, but sometimes I keep going, but yes. No, but great. So why don't you, if you start writing at say 640, right? Why don't you stop writing at say eight? And even if you can't write, Erica, just sit there. Just, excuse my language, sit your ass down in the chair and just stay there. And I don't know if the phone rings, don't answer it. If you want to get online to check your whatever, don't do it. Just sit there. Yeah. And sit there and sit there. And then it's eight o'clock and that's your writing time. And you've done as much writing as you're going to do that day, but at least you've given yourself an opportunity. And then you can go and do river dance for the rest of the day, knowing that at least you've given yourself a chance. And honestly, Here's where the rubber meets the road. If you don't get any writing done by giving yourself like an hour and a half, pretty much every day, then don't worry about it. Go off and like, you know, do something else. Don't worry about it. Like I said, everybody can create. Not everybody does. It's 2024, people. You know, it's time for us to go. Hey, if you're going to give yourself like two hours a day to get your writing done and you still can't get it done then maybe you're not the person who should be writing. Maybe you should be doing something else. Creative, sure. But don't worry about it. You know, like, I don't, oh, I don't know, go dog walking for two hours in the morning. I don't have a dog because I'm one of those people who shouldn't have a dog. You know what I'm saying? You have to get to know yourself. And part of getting to know yourself is going, you know what? Maybe something's not for me. Maybe you should be painting, Erica. Maybe you should be playing the piano. Maybe you should be doing choreography or yoga, you know? Okay. So that's that's called, um, hi, it's you, you know? I don't think we need to beat ourselves up anymore for n being unable to do something Sometimes, you know, you got to do like that song says and let it go. Okay, well, I have 240 pages written of my novel. I'm almost done with it. I'm not going to not do it. So thank you, but I'm going to get done with it. I thought that's maybe exactly that was your it. method. If that was your method, well, then good. I'm going to friggin' do it. I'm not going to just go do yoga. I like doing yoga. <laughs> thank you. And that's exactly your line, Erica. That's okay. exactly what you're supposed it to say. There you go. <laughs> All right. So give yourself a little more time in the morning and you've got 240 X pages, then girl, go, go girl, get it done. Get it done. Because why are you doing that to yourself? Why are you discounting yourself? Right? Get it done then. All right. Then get it done. Then come in, you can get, you know, two pages a day and you you can just march forward and get it done already. It's 2024. Oh, that, that rhymes. It's 2024. What are you waiting for? No, that's not even a rhyme. It's like a Dionne Warwick rhyme, you know? 
kind of she uses the same word twice and she calls it a rhyme, but you know, she doesn't write all her songs, so we don't fault her. Okay. Yes, sister. Good job. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Crystal. You can unmute yourself. Crystal. It was great to see you in person too, Crystal. At the there's something, something, something. We saw each other. Some party. The uh, uh, Writers Guild uh, award ceremony. There you go. Yeah, thank you. It was so, so, Hi. so great to see you. Hi, so great to see you in person. Hi. Hi. So I, I literally just wanted to update you um, with the writing process. And um, I did present my play. It was finished. Uh, it, um, it wasn't boring. It was, uh, it, it did capture people's attention. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did get a, a lot of notes, but it was filled, it was wrapped in kindness. Mm -hmm. and people did say, thank you. People were really receptive and people were really, um, rooting for it. So I feel like I got the notes that I needed to get, but I also got people who like really want the play to be go really good. So I got a great draft, but there's work to do. Okay, so, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So because you worked really hard on it. Yeah, it's been a, a journey and, and I just thank you for your patience with me on this process <laughs> you know mm -hmm. um, i i don't want to let it go and i think it it may take me a long time to get it where i want it to be and i'm okay with that i'm i'm very okay with that um mm -hmm. the research part I, I i don't i i have to work on some people's comments were a couple people's comments were a little harsher than others but it's okay um one person said that my black character was too strong for the time, but I didn't understand that because the time was like the 40s and I want it to take place in the 40s and the comment was that it looks like it was in the 60s and I was like, but I feel like there were strong black women in the 40s. Um, so I kind of no, there weren't any strong black women in the 40s. They only started appearing in the 60s because that's the movies that people say. <laughs> there were only and there were and there were no strong black women in, in like 1900s. Mm -hmm. And there were certainly strong black women in the 1800s. <laughs> it's okay. Maybe maybe, you know, take take a look at it. Maybe it's a note that's said in a way that's less than helpful. Sometimes language can be, you know, can be more specific to the time, maybe. Okay. You know, maybe they're like modern in their speech. I don't know. I'm just trying to be generous with the note. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, there have been strong black people. There have been strong people. There have been there has been strength, not even related to humans, right? Since the beginning of time. So so nah. But how that strength is expressed and the words they the character might use might be might feel like a character in the 60s with their word choice maybe or their actions you know if they're doing i don't know what some activities maybe that that people didn't more readily do in the 60s and they did it more in the four i mean i don't know maybe yeah. that's maybe that maybe the the note underneath the note maybe maybe I mean, they also the relation. They also said the relationship between the black and the white woman was too fast, which mm -hmm. I, like, I, I was... they have sex on the first day. Is that what they mean? <laughs> no, I guess no, oh. no. Oh, not that. Not that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they just were friends too fast, and so I was like, okay, how do I make them friends less sooner? So I don't know. So I, I'm I'm like listening and and I, and then I guess it the the overall I, they said whatever was problematic could is fixable and so I'm like okay I'll That's try and fix it I, I I'll try and fix it you, is there like do you know do you use chirons like those things that go over the screen and say like like words chirons chirons have you ever heard of like they're the you know when you watch a movie and it says like twenty minutes later like that. <laughs> <laughs> you could have 
have someone just walk by or uh, uh, someone go turn to the audience and go three years later ah yes maybe that would that i don't know how to do that in a play but <laughs> you can have a character turn to the audience and just say three years later they're we were even closer. three years later we're best friends who knew <laughs> You know, I mean, because it's a fair note and it's a really easy fix if you just wanted to do like that. Okay. I mean, maybe that'll help. Maybe. maybe. It's a good note, though. Yeah. You know, you want things to hold organically in a play. Yeah. Yeah. So that those were the things. But, I mean, again, thank you for the the help. Thank you for the patience. And thank you for not letting me off the hook and let me do the work so again i'm, I'm glad well you did the work all on your own and i'm glad we were here to cheer you on sometimes we cheer you on people by saying quit it already like that and then you go gosh darn it i'm not gonna quit erica <laughs> well done sometimes you go i don't know what you know because because yeah there there are lots of ways to uh encourage people forward yeah. And uh, it's good to know that each of you has it in you to figure it out. I'm just here like holding the light. You know, they say the guru is not, not the, the, the one who is lit. The guru is the one who holds the lamp so that people can see the path that is theirs already and that they are already walking. So that's what this is all about. Yeah. Yeah. It's six o'clock, people. It's time to go bye bye. It's time to go bye bye. So we're gonna go bye bye. Are we back next week, New Work Department? I have no idea what we're doing. Yes. We, we are. We are back next Monday. Yep. We're back bye. next Monday. Thank you. Yes. Closing words of wisdom for the from the New Work Department. Any words of wisdom? Believe in yourself, and we love you. Oh, do we love? Believe it out. That's beautiful. Believe in yourself, and we love you. Believe in yourself, and we love you. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay, people. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Great questions this time. See ya. Bye-bye.